Welcome to part four of the Sonic Lost World commentary. Hidden World! Uh, <laughs> time for some Riddler challenges. How do you unlock those anyway? I think it just happens automatically. Well, no, because cause I didn't unlock this one right away. I think I unlocked... Ugh, I hate these levels. They suck. I, some of the worst control ever. If you unlock this world before going into Sky Road, this is the first time you experience the flying gimmick of Sonic. This is the one of one out of two times that you experience this trope. One of the some of the worst controls I've ever played. I don't understand how it works. This controls like utter ass. What happens is that you control your altitude by holding down the A button or whatever button actually I guess works, and then you control where Sonic's going with the D-pad. The thing is, is that you're constantly fighting gravity or air resistance while you're doing so. So you know it's. I have had times where the game literally just wrestled control away from you, even though I was holding the button. Sonic just flew back up. I guess this is like when it comes to like level or just control gimmicks this is has to be the most pointless one this is this is right up there with werehog <laughs> to me why, why isn't this a fucking tornado level exact that's what i was just about to bring up they like, have a tornado level way late in the <laughs> game but uh no johnny while i agree this is bad i'm sorry the uh, tornado is freaking jesus compared to this i'm sorry no, no, what I'm saying is that why isn't this a tornado level? Why isn't this something similar to, like, Sky Chase or something like that? You know, we have Sky Chase badniks, enemies, but we are not riding a tornado. Because that would have made the game fun, and Sega clearly wasn't trying that with this game. What bugs me most about this level is that you can let Sonic rest at the top of the screen, and he won't... D Wait, what? Hold on, what sort Whoa. of sorcery was that? You went <laughs> under the screen and didn't die. I, I just... don't know what happened. I am taking whatever I can, because uh, I, I may have not mentioned this in earlier parts, but I'm doing a fuckload of editing for this playthrough, ladies and gentlemen, just for the sake of keeping things moving on. So while it looks like I'm playing this game rather, you know, straightforward and rather well, I assure you, there were a lot of deaths. Somebody give this man the Oscar. Oh, some okay. So somebody really liked the the snow stages in Galaxy because, uh, oh, there it is. Great. So we're, we're traversing a giant propeller ice penis. That's great. That's wonderful, <laughs> Sega. Thanks. <laughs> Available now. No wonder they got the rights to Atlas. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I will say that like, the fact that when you run on ice, you skate like Shadow. But that's kind of like, like a, a, nice, a nice little touch. Yeah, it, yeah well, you see what what, what it is. It, it, it's like it, it's like the Super Mario Galaxy skating mechanic. You even do a stupid twirl whenever you jump. That <laughs> stupid twirl fucked me over so many. He's times. He's getting ready for the Olympic Games. All right, guys, give him a break. <laughs> <laughs> the Olympic Games are already out. No need to practice anymore. I would be the counter argument and say as long as you let go of the run button, you can jump normally. And but I then find you it's move really, really, really slow. But the double jump lets you propel forward enough that it's not such a problem. You can't I double. No, it, you but. can't double jump on the uh, when you're running. Now you can only. Well, you know, it, it, it's not like that. There, it, it's not like there aren't workarounds for the control issues if you know what you're doing. The the problem with that is you have to figure out what you're doing, or find out from someone who's played the game. You know. It's like yeah, it, like it's like yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm on the same boat as I'm on the same boat as Clement. You can you can let go of the run button before jumping on while you're skating on ice, or you can make the figure skating jump not suck so much. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it just got to the point where I I uh, basically I just uh, I let go of the I hold held down the run button so I wasn't going at like three miles an hour, and I let go of it every time I had to jump, and that was just awkward for me. Just do what I did. Guys, guys, just do what I did. Play a different game. Oh, well, you know, <laughs> that's obviously the best option, but I can't say that this game sucks without having beaten the whole thing because, um, uh, reasons? I don't know. Because then you're not a credible reviewer, Ted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> basically, yeah. Basically, I had to finish it because the internet's fucking dumb. That's, so, yeah. If you didn't finish it, you're not a true gamer. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it depends. On, it, it depends on how much you're you're trying to say about a game. In, in my opinion, like if you want to if you want to do a thorough review, sure, uh, go. You you kind of need to play at least a majority of the game. But if you're just trying to say I played it, I didn't like it, then you don't need to beat it. And anyone who says you needed to beat it is a fucking idiot. What do you mean you didn't play Sonic Labyrinth twelve times? <laughs> <laughs> 
I, I have yet to finish Sonic Spinball on Game Gear. I can't do it. <laughs> I, I, I just, no, I no. I, it. I think I think that might be physically impossible because the game is just that broken. It's so boring. <laughs> I can't, guys. I can't. I, I can't complete Spinball in the Mega Drive. It's too fucking hard. Wait, hold on. But if you beat, think about it this way: if you beat, you've beaten pretty much every other Sonic game ever made, right? That's your, the only one you have left. Come, at this point, I know, you just. But I don't want to. If you have only one left. <laughs> at this left. point, it's just a matter of completionism. <laughs> it should be a point of pride, Clement. <laughs> but Game Gear Spinball is so boring. Clement can't complete it because when he does, his life will no longer have meaning. So he has to hold that game out until, <laughs> until the second before he dies. And like, now my life is done. What the hell just happened? I I used the laser and I, I bounced off the the, the the little mole man and I hit a laser crystal. Uh, sent me to the other side. Okay, I, I just want to say, there is a lot of boost pad pathways in this. Like this. Exactly this. Like boost pad, spring, boost pad, then this, and then what... what Basically, I mean, you it's... haven't touched. Oh, he had to touch the controller there. Yay, gameplay! Woo, gameplay! <laughs> I'm taking the most straightforward path. Oh, goody, parkour system. <laughs> the best way to describe this level is pretty much just chemical plant zone in, in snow. Outside. Done. Yeah. In space! A little bit of oil. <laughs> in, in space! In space! <laughs> <laughs> I actually do think that was a mandatory laser section because uh, uh, you ha I, uh, I couldn't find the area where you had to use the parkour to get to the red ring without using the laser uh, to use the crystals to maneuver up there. Unless I'm mistaken, obviously. This scene is a huge mood swing for Tails. Yeah. It makes no sense. Oh yeah, Tails gets really moody about Sonic asking Eggman for help. It's like, um, okay, why do, why do we have him here if he's not going to help? It's like, Tails, stop being such a whiny little bitch and just deal with it. It wouldn't be so bad if he didn't use the literal line, You trust Eggman more than me. I, did, I just like it because it's it's Tails. Like, like, we've never seen this kind of angry side of Tails before. And it's just another dimension to, to his character. There's no reason for it. I will, I will, yeah. I will, I will, I will admit, like, it could have been, it could have been written a bit more organically. But I, I like the fact that we are showing... We are being shown a different side. I also like the fact that, you know, we have, for the first time, we have Sonic admitting the fact that he fucked up royalty. Although I will say to everyone who disliked the jokes in colors, I will admit that this, you know, this you bite joke, I, I cringe at this, but I was like, oh, no. Just, just no. I'm good. I'm good. I just, I don't feel, I feel like with the new writing uh, style that they have, it doesn't feel sincere enough to pull off drama. Huge quotation marks there. Oh, uh, well, you know. Like, there are times where I think they're trying too hard to appeal to a younger demographic. Well, the thing is, I think they're trying to appeal to an older demographic, because there's, like, a lot of older fans who kind of want things to be a little bit more like Adventure 1 with the Takal story and Adventure 2 with the Shadow story, where they want, like, a more serious thing to happen in the Sonic yeah, games. Yeah, but if I, if, I, if, if I hate someone or I wanted them to go fuck off, I don't tell them that they bite. I just say, hey, you're an asshole. Well, you're, you're not going to be able <laughs> well, to... What's... Oh, well, oh, I guess it's my turn. Um, you're not gonna, basically what I was just gonna say is that you're not gonna be able to get everybody happy on the story front, you know? Some people want Dark Sonic, some people want Light Sonic, you can't, you're not gonna, finding a middle ground isn't gonna make anyone happy. That's all no. I have. Oh, one, 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 one thing, the hell? This this level sucked, but, but but one thing I'll quickly say about you guys talking about how the fans will, will, will want the adventure style of story back. It was recently revealed that the um the writers for these games, um Ken Pontac and Warren Graff, basically had never really played a, a Sonic game before and knew pretty much nothing about the characters when they were hired by Sega. That which... explains so much. <laughs> Yeah, I'll be, I'll be honest, like, I, I really like the scripts to um, Colors, Generations to an extent, and this, but like, I'm not surprised that they knew nothing about the characters. I will say right now, I don't think this level is that bad when you're not going for Red Rings. It does look like it could be fun. And you know what, I kind of like the gimmick where the, where, the, where the snowball collects rings as it rolls. <laughs> I died so many times here. Ugh. I actually didn't die that much, I just find the gimmick kind of sniff. It's, you know what, this is like Boulder Mario. It is like Boulder Mario, and I hated those levels too. Better. 
I attribute <laughs> it more to the rolling gizmo levels, only you can actually control the ball. I just, I just don't understand the gimmick. It's more like, it's structured like, it's structured kind of like the Boulder Mario levels. And I hated those levels. I, I hated them with a passion. <laughs> I didn't mind those levels, actually. Why did Sonic roll himself in a snowball? Exactly, Clement, exactly. <laughs> it, was, it was one of the only times I actually settled for a Bronze Star the first time I played the game. Yeah, uh, the biggest question when it comes to this level is, why the hell are we in a snowball to begin with? Because like, we were stupid enough to spin dash, and now I we're stuck with I honestly thought it. you were going to say because we're Sonic heroes, but I <laughs> guess that would be obvious. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> because no, no. Sonic CD is time travel. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Game Gear Games, LOL. <laughs> it, it, it's like, but, but, you know, I, I do find that the, the, the ring is getting stuck to the outside of the snowball kind of clever. Katamari Damashi. I already made that joke. Yeah, I know, so, but we couldn't hear it, so I'm doing it again. <laughs> how long did it take you guys to figure out that you can use the Yetis to bounce? Uh, I just discovered the, watching this right now, actually. Same here. Yeah, <laughs> there's a secret hidden way to automate the level. Yeah, uh, yeah. You see, the level isn't that bad when you're not playing it, of course. <laughs> just like every game. Yeah, exactly. The first one I ran into bounced me, so I figured they were just bumpers that I had to avoid. Yeah. So I avoided them like the Wait, you can kill this, those? Though. What? You can kill those? How did you get through them without killing them? them? I I died and I died enough so that I made sure that I had I got the the little uh the wing <laughs> thing. <laughs> there oh, you, and skip you skipped this. the oh, level. I skipped, <laughs> you skipped it. <laughs> Yeah, can we talk about that? Every time you die a lot in Sonic Lost World, they give you a little, okay, we'll let you skip ahead because you suck at this game kind of option. I hate when they games do that. I don't. I don't. Because I, I, I'd still be stuck on this level if not for that you option. You know what? I actually, I actually don't mind when games give you a hand if you've been dying a lot. Like, Crash Bandicoot will, will give you a, a free uh, protection mask if you die too many times at the same checkpoint. But... Uh, but you know, actually giving your giving you a, an "I'll play the game for you" option is kind of you know insulting. <laughs> Skipping entire sections of gameplay just ain't cool to me. I don't mind it because it's optional. It's optional, so for me, it's like if you don't want it, don't take it. Like I, if it, if it feels forced on you. Like I can yeah. understand why, especially like veteran gamers would feel insulted by it, but it's optional. If you don't want to use it, don't fucking use it. Just keep going. The only game I where it bugged me was Donkey Kong Country Returns because it shows up after you die like five times, and there's all, there's so much instant death stuff in that game where it's easy to die five times every single level, and I hate that fucking pig with his stupid white flag being, oh, <laughs> you suck at our really hard game, even though we didn't give you enough. Time to try here. I'm going to hold your hand. Fuck that pig. Hate that asshole. <laughs> and here's what's her name, Xena. The most, I think the, the easily the, the most one-dimensional of all the characters and the most crappy boss fight. She's the token female, and she's written like one. <laughs> she's she's written like her character is so like it's so not progressive. It's just she's the female, so all she cares about is like is her nail art and shopping and. Uh, this, Doing her nails, you know, cosmetic stuff. Yeah, it's it's it, it, it's it's at the point where it's almost actually offensive. There's there is there is actually one line which I was like, you know, there's a, there's a line later on where she she mentions um the fact that she doesn't eat, and I'm like, ah, oh, that's that's kind of pushing it a bit far for me. She's like, you know, yeah. I'm not eating. She's trying to like keep her figure. I'm like, that's that kind of does cross the, the border into actually being offensive. Yeah, but I would say it's just lazy. Like, it's not offensive to me because she's supposed to be the villain, so I get that she's kind of like got these these uh, these qualities to her that make her kind of unappealing. But at the same time, it's one-dimensional as hell because how do I write a female villain? Hmm, she has to think about her nails. She doesn't want to break nails. She's a bimbo character. Mm. She literally has a line with Sonic where she goes, uh, Gotta go, call me! <laughs> I know, it's just well, two things about this cartoon. I love the I love Tails' response when Sonic's like, that was cool. And of course, as you know, as we all know, Clement's favorite thing in the world when Eggman goes berserk in a second. Was it? <laughs> it, it is now. I've now, I've now deemed this your favorite moment in the world. <laughs> <laughs> this is my favorite moment in Sonic Lost World. <laughs> ah, good man. I mean, this is the part where, like, you can tell the dialogue is 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 a bit more adult than in previous games. The fact that they actually use the word like death, dying, and dead, which is a small thing, but I I really dislike it when children shows like never use those words because I'm like, that's you know, that's just kind of that's just pounding a bit too much on me. I love what Zaz says his line right here. Where are you gonna live when your world's dead, guys? All oh, right, you'll be dead too. 
<laughs> Never use the D word. <laughs> I just love Eggman's. I just love Eggman's line. I will burn your world, you rebellious scum. I love it. Uh, Eggman, we're on the world. <laughs> <laughs> I actually remember when when Sonic Lost World was first rated. I believe by the American rating company, they rated it for like, and they they, they used specific lines like, as long as I can still strangle a Zeti, my hands are fine. And everyone thought that that was Knuckles saying that. I think no one, nobody imagined <laughs> we'd, we'd, we'd hear yeah. Eggman say that line. It's amazing. Oh uh, yeah. I, 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 I'm just jumping the gun a bit here. I'm disappointed they never follow up with that, though. You know, because... Eggman strangling Zeddies? No, I just... Well, at least do something with that, because... I don't I, I don't know. That sounds like a pretty badass threat. You know, and he's Dr. Eggman, of course. I think he has every right to do that. But they don't do anything with that. You know, he doesn't, like, go out of his... Mm. He doesn't go out of his way to make a mech or... You know, to attempt to at least attack the Zeddy by himself. Everything's... It's all Sonic in an... You know, I get that for gameplay, but I want to see Eggman fall. I want to see him strangle some Zeddy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's part of his plan, basically. Well, because a uh, spoiler alert, like anyone cares, you know, his plan is basically have Sonic deal with it, so Eggman can go behind the scenes and you know take over the world and stuff. So you know. yeah, but I would have loved to see a Zeddy versus Death Egg robot sort of scene, you know. Yeah, that's the thing I would have saved. Yeah, I think it would have been nice if, like, after you have Sonic fight them, there's a cutscene where Eggman comes in with his mechs and just, like, smacks him around a bit. Because, again, because at this point, Eggman hates hates these characters, you know? Like, he actually wants them to die, which I think would have been interesting if you saw a bit of that. I can finally play the DLC level that was exclusive to pre-orders. <laughs> 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 yeah, we never did. We never did show up the Casino Night pinball level in our generations playthrough. And who uh, was recording that? <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, uh, fuck you. And they never <laughs> released this DLC on the Xbox 360, so I still haven't played it. It's a pinball table. They never released it as as, as DLC that you could actually buy or. Anything. No, they did on Steam. I think. Are you sure? I think. Sure they did. I think no, no. I know on Steam. I, I know on Steam they did. But are you sure? That's I'm pretty because sure on Xbox Steam line. they don't have to go to any effort. I will say I I I dislike this level for, for three reasons. One, I think the level design is some of the blandest in this game as a whole. Yeah, it's pretty fucking flat. It's it's a small nitpick, but again, like I'm I'm tired of of nostalgia after the generations. I didn't really need to see another c casino level, and and three. Why why would they build a casino in in a winter wonderland? Why why why, why? Johnny? Why tell me why? Moreover, there's a casino on the Lost Hex in the winter area that's Sonic and Tails themed. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's like Sonic Rush when you go to that city and there's like Sonic and Blaze neon lights everywhere. I thought you'd never been here before. <laughs> there is big fans of the Genesis days. Yeah, one of the things I didn't exactly show off there, for good reason, mind you, was the second pinball table. You have to play in order to get a red ring, and god damn, I took for fucking ever in that on my first playthrough. Again, because I'm, I'm not a pinball guy. So when you force me to play pinball to get a red ring, uh, I'm not exactly a happy camper. To be fair, polishing your nails is a really delicate process. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, so sorry you have nothing more important to do with me. <laughs> I know, that's a pretty good line. What thing like I, I want to say this place is called Fro is called F Frozen Factory and I I'm gonna say this and probably get proven wrong but I don't remember there being a factory in, in this world. Uh, oh yeah, it was uh, all the oil ocean. It, it was the oil ocean chemical plant gimmick. Is this one? We're gonna have a Metropolis reference here. Yeah, we're actually we're actually going into a factory in this level too. This looks like Winter Zone. The Cut Sonic Two level. This game is so boring, you know. I. I <laughs> I literally, I literally did just played the, I've been playing this game over the last week and it's so boring I can't even remember what levels are in it. Good, good job Sonic Team. Good job. Mike, again, when I did my vlog review, I, I actually was surprised because I thought the major complaint about all the levels in this game was that it plays it really safe and familiar and like, it doesn't really surprise you or do anything like outlandish. Like, yeah, you said in Frozen Factory 3 you found the level kind of boring. Yeah, it's, I agree, it's kind of safe. It's not really an amazing, exciting level. 
Like, I still enjoy the game enough, but I do understand that, like, the levels are kind of... Eh, they're, they're, they're there. I don't care about, like, the level aesthetics going more traditional or more Mario, if you want to say it that way. Mm. Well, well I, I, care, I care to some extent, though. I just feel, in terms of level design, you know, it, all that jazz is just a step backwards from what we've had, you know? Like, we, like we saw... Like, we saw how flat Desert Ruins was. We saw how flat Frozen Factory Zone 3 was. Which, by the way, is still a considerable improvement over Frozen Factory Zone 3 in the 3DS uh, version. But, uh, you know, it's just... There's nothing there. It was like... There's no, there's, no, there's no slopes. There's no branching pathways. There's no gameplay style where if you stick to the high path, you're rewarded with more goodies and stuff like that. You know, it's, that's the stuff you play a Sonic game for. If I want to play a traditional platformer, I'm going to play Mario, not Sonic. Crash Bandicoot. Uh, oh yeah. When was the last time Crash Bandicoot had a game? Uh, Twin Sanity, unfortunately. <laughs> Although I heard Sony is trying to buy the rights back. No, that was, uh, bullshit. It was bullshit. Oh, that was? It was, yeah, it was confirmed, uh, false. Aww. Well, that ruined my day. At this point, I just want anyone <laughs> to take that franchise back so we can see an end to Tattoo Crash. So you don't even count the likes of Crash of the Titans or uh, Mind Over the No, Universe, no. <laughs> Those are in a completely fucking different universe as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I would rather play Sonic the Werehog. And Sonic the Werehog actually has worse control than I, than I remember him having. Jesus Christ. <laughs> to go to go on to, to go on from something Johnny said about the uh, level design being wrong. My problem is that is that like they they have like four set the, like level gimmicks. They have like the, the kind of windy hill, you know, like revolving planet. They have like the um they have like a standard two D. They have kind of, of like these kind of um half pipe level designs and the kind of on rail sections. And I just kind of kind of rinse and repeat those. And to me, I, I just got bored of it. Like you know, I'm basically playing Windy Hill again, but it, you know, we're outside in snow or we're in a jungle. I just kind of got really bored of the um, the kind of the, the level design of, of Windy Hill with ice, Windy Hill with sand, Windy Hill with clouds. Hey guys, like we we you we heard you wanted special stages back. Why don't we make a whole game made of those? <laughs> and that's what that's what that's that's how this game came to be. And that's why Sonic Lost World sucks. Okay, I understand the need to appeal to nostalgia, but did anybody really like these nuts and bolts in uh, Metropolis Zone? Because I hated these things in uh, that in that level. I'm pretty ambiv ambivalent toward Metropolis Zone as a whole. It's really just the badniks that pissed me off. Yeah, <laughs> which we'll be coming up to. <laughs> oh, don't tell me they brought the slicers back again. <laughs> yes, they did. Jesus Christ. Ted, Ted, when 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 uh, Banjo Kazooie did nuts and bolts, everyone loved it. So Sega was like, we'll do it as well. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Nuts and bolts, we have those too. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> we did the we did those first. <laughs> Something I'm noticing about these things though is that they seem to be a bit finicky about where you are on the bolts when they start actually working. Yes. Well, that was, uh, the, to some extent, the, 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 the Genesis game is like that. No, I never had that problem in the Genesis game. Not really. Not really. The moment you walked over the middle of the bolt, you were stuck there until you jumped, and you were controlling the bolt. In this one, it seems like there's a really, really, really tiny, precise place where that, where that spot is. And it's real easy to overshoot on foot. Yeah. Sonic 2 is perfect, therefore Metropolis was perfect, Ted. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I love your logic. It is so great and not at all um, unarguable. Perfect, I say. <laughs> okay, yeah, you keep telling yourself that. You know what, I, I love Sonic 2, but, uh, but overall its design was probably the least solid of the Genesis games. No, well, Sonic 1, Sonic 1. No, no, I mean just like in terms of where things were placed within levels. The Badniks especially could be kind of dickish. No, I, I'd still say Sonic Clement 1. Clement the Great One has spoken. Everyone shut your faces. No, uh, no, Sonic 1 just had <laughs> had some odd design, just had some counter into counterproductive design choices, but its design was still solid. Like, everything was fair, except for that one pit in Starlight Zone. I, I, I'll never forgive that pit for killing me, by the way. <laughs> Whereas Sonic 2 had a few more things that just sort of blindsided you. I I really want to want to find the guy who the the, the man or woman uh, who designed all these boss fights and just ask why, 
Because, like, look at it. Like, Johnny hit, hit her twice and she's dead. That is not a fun boss fight. It really isn't. Well, there's a thing. Do you want to play a lawn level where the boss fights go on forever, or do you want them to be really quick and easy? Well, it needs to. It's not. It's not necessarily that they go. It, it just needs to have more oomph to it, because you know you hit them twice and then they they, they shake their fist. And well, they well, that's, that's because I'm using the charged homing attack too. You yeah. Know? Let's 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 just just talk about the bosses in the in the classic games. All of them could be beaten pretty quick, or most of them anyway. But that was only if you had that was only if you had skill and you knew what you were doing. The ones in this, the ones in this game are kind of, you know, they're just, they're just easy to beat by default. They kind of remind me of Sonic CD. The only bosses, skill actually. you need is the ability to hover around them until your homing attack is charged up at its max power. You mean yeah. until your homing attack decides to charge up the max power? <laughs> I have more luck with the bosses than I do regular enemies for some odd reason. But I think it's yeah. programmed that way. Like I think it's only programmed to charge up that much when you're near a boss. I think it's because enemies. The, the homing attack reticle also acts as a HP bar. Uh, I'll get more into what I mean when we get into the end of this playthrough. Uh, with the biggest example I can think of. But I think that's how it works. I'm a complicated guy. Really? <laughs> I love that line. <laughs> the best line. Uh, Tails is uh, sad. Eggman might be like the soul, like the big saving grace of this game. This, I, guys, I, fi I figured out I figured out why Clement likes this game and the rest of us don't. It's because Eggman is so good in this game. Clement's able to look past all the terrible controls and level design. I figured that out. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine is my favorite video game of all time. <laughs> <laughs> Knew it all along. 